My name is Dr. Nikunj Patel, Assistant Professor in Department of Biochemistry, Government Medical College, Surat. On today's lecture, we have discussed about the biological oxidation, electron transport chain, and oxidative phosphorylation. Objective of the lecture are introduction and significance of electron transport chain. Component and the organization means which are the component are the involved in electron transport chain and how they are the arranged in cell. Source of the electron for the electron transport chain. Coupling reaction between the electron transport and oxidative phosphorylation. Chemiosmotic theory for oxidative phosphorylation and at the last inhibitor of the electrotransport chain and oxidative phosphorylation. Introduction Electron transport chain is a component of mitochondrial protein involved in transport of the electron from reducing equivalent to oxygen for production of energy. Here, complex 1 2 4 generate the proton gradient across the inner, inner mitochondrial membrane, and complex 5 that use that gradient for the ATP synthesis. significance the major food stuff in the diet whenever it is oxidized it releases the energy and that energy are the capture in the form of the reducing equivalent like NADH and FADH whatever energy are the captured by NADH and FADH2 now it is a release or used for the ATP synthesis in mitochondria. In the mitochondria, the NADH and FADH it release their energy in the form of the electron to the electron transport chain. In the electron transport chain, electron are the moves to the oxygen. During that movement, it generates the proton gradient and the proton gradient are the utilized by the complex of the oxidative phosphorylation for the ATP synthesis. That is the basis of the electron transport chain and oxidative phosphorylation. Component of the electron transport chain. The, for, mainly four components or four complex are the involved in the electron transport chain. They are known as a four enzyme complex. They are embedded in the inner mitochondrial membrane. Complex 1, complex 2, complex 3 and complex 4. They are the fixed complex enzyme in the inner mitochondrial membrane. Remember, they are not a mobile complex. Complex 1, it is known as a NADH coenzyme Q oxidoreductase. Complex 2, it is a succinate coenzyme Q oxidoreductase. Complex 3, it is a coenzyme Q cytochrom C oxidoreductase. And complex 4, it is known as a cytochrom oxidase. Along with that, for fixed complex in the inner mitochondrial membrane, two mobile carrier are also present. They are the coenzyme Q and cytochrome C. They are known as a complex of the electron transport chain. Along with that, one more complex, it is also present in the inner mitochondrial membrane. They are the also fixed type of enzyme complex. It is known as a ATP synthase complex. It is part of the oxidative phosphorylase. So overall, 
component of the electron transport chain it is a four fixed complex of protein that is complex 1 2 4 and two mobile carrier for the electron transport chain and one fixed complex for the oxidative phosphorylation it is a ATP synthase complex. That is a basic structure of the mitochondria. It have a two membrane, outer membrane and inner membrane. Between the two membrane that is the space it is known as a intermembrane space and in the core part of the mitochondria that is known as a matrix part of the mitochondria. The, all the ETC complex are the present in the inner mitochondrial membrane. Remember. So, location of the electron transport chain, it is a inner mitochondrial membrane. It is complex 1, complex 3, complex 4, along with the two mobile carrier, coenzyme Q, cytochrome C, and there is a complex 5 of the oxidative phosphorus. Now, what is a complex one? What is the function of the complex one? What is the basic structure of the complex one? We have discussed. Complex one, it is also known as the NADH dehydrogenase complex or NADH coenzyme Q oxidoreductase. The complex also contains the some flavoprotein like aphamen and iron sulfur. Complex one contain the different protein like flavoprotein, apamin, and iron sulfur complex. Iron sulfur complex protein are the complex in which iron it is a coordinated by HDD residue. The role of that different protein in the complex one it is transfer the electron from reducing equivalent to the mobile carrier they are ultimately carrier molecule in complex one they carry means accept the electron from the reducing equivalent and donor to the next step. so overall reaction catalyzed by the complex one it is transfer of the electron from NADH to the flavoprotein aphamen to iron sulfur complex and finally to the mobile carrier coenzyme Q. When electron it is a pass from NADH to coenzyme Q, it lost it some of the energy and that energy it is ultimately used by that complex one transfer the four proton from matrix part of mitochondria to intermembrane space. Means it help in generate the proton gradient across the inner mitochondrial membrane. How the protein at the transfer? It is transferred by the energy that is lost by the electron when transferred from NADH to coenzyme Q. It's when electron it is a pass to the next step, it lost its sum of the energy and that energy it is ultimately used by that complex to force the proton from matrix to the intermembrane space. So just remember in the complex one, electron it is the transfer from reducing equivalent NADH to pleoprotein through ion sulfur complex to finally mobile carrier coenzyme. So NADH it is oxidized along with the that mobile carrier coenzyme Q it is reduced to the quinol. During that whatever energy it is a release it is a help in transfer of the four proton from matrix part of the mitochondria to intermembrane space. That is the role of complex. complex 2 of electron transport chain it is more or less same like the complex it is also known as a succinate dehydrogenase complex 
enzyme like the complex one it is also contain the different protein like fid containing flavoprotein and iron sulfur complex in which flow of the electron it is like succinate to flavoprotein to iron sulfur complex and finally to coenzyme so remember here two different pathway complex one and complex two complex 1 it is a receive the electron from NADH complex 2 it is receive the electron from the FADH both are ultimately donated electron to the coenzyme so electron from complex 1 to complex 3 means coenzyme Q and in case of the electron from FADH2 it is also transferred to the coenzyme it is not only succinate that gives the FADH2, other molecule, other metabolic pathway also produce the FADH2 that finally gives the electron by complex 2 in electron transport. So other metabolic pathway that catalyzed by the enzyme like SI coenzyme A dehydrogenase, glycerol 3 phosphate dehydrogenase. All the pathway that produce the FADH2, the FADH2 that donate the electron with the help of complex 2. Remember, unlike the complex 1, the energy release during the electron transport through complex 2 it is very less. So, in that case, no proton are the transfer from matrix to the intermembrane space. There is very less energy at the release, so it does not sufficient to transfer the proton from matrix to the intermembrane space. So, in case of the complex 2, there is no proton gradient in intermembrane space. So, that is the summary of the complex 2. Electron from the succinate, it is transferred to the flavoprotein through ion sulfur complex to the mobile K. So itself it is oxidized and coenzyme Q it is reduced to the coenzyme. There is no release of the sufficient energy to transfer the proton from matrix to the intermembrane space. First mobile carrier it is a coenzyme Q. It is located after complex 1 and complex 2 for receiving the electron either from the complex 1 or complex 2. It is hydrophobic in nature and small in size, so it is a easily um, means placed in the membrane of mitochondria, inner membrane of mitochondria. It is a freely mobile carrier. Remember, it is not a fixed protein. It accepts the electron from either complex 1 or complex 2 and donate or release that electron to the complex 3. When it accepts the electron and hydrogen it is reduced to the quinol that is intermediate form of the coenzyme q it is known as a semi quinol when it receives the only one electron it is known as a semi quinol it is a fully oxidized form it is known as a quinol so quinol it is a fully oxidized form quinol it is a fully reduced form and semi quinol it is a partially reduced form. Now complex 3 cytochrome reductase. Cytochrome reductase same like the complex 1 and complex 2. It also contains the different proteins like cytochrome B, cytochrome C1 and ion sulfur complex. Remember that cytochrome B and cytochrome C1 it is a hemoprotein means that contain the heme as a prostatic group and ion sulfur complex at the present in the complex 3 it is slightly different than complex 1 and complex 2. The ion sulfur complex present in the complex 3 it is known as a rex center. Unlike the complex 1 and complex 2 ion sulfur complex present in the cytochrome reductase 
in which ion atom it is coordinated to the histidine residue rather than cysteine residue. In the normally in complex 1 and complex 2, ion atom it is a coordinated to the cysteine residue. But in case of the complex 3, what happened? The ion it is a coordinated with the histidine residue rather than cysteine residue. So it is slightly different. Answer. So you have to remember is complex. What is the component of the cytochrome reductase? The cytochrome B and cytochrome C1. They are the hemoprotein and ion sulfur complex. It is exact. When electron it is a passes through the complex 3, it releases sufficient energy to transfer the 4 proton from matrix to the internal space. Yes. So, when quinol it is oxidized, it releases the electron, it is transferred by the ion sulfur complex 6 center, cytochrome B, and finally to cytochrome C1 to the mobile carrier, second mobile carrier, it is the cytochrome C. It receives the electron and itself it is a reduced to the reduced form of the cytochrome C. And when electron it is a passes through the complex state, it releases the energy and energy it is a use for the transfer of the four proton from matrix part of mitochondria to the intermembrane space. Yes. Finally, complex four that cytochrome C that receive the electron from complex 3, it now transfer that electron to the complex 4. Complex 4, it have also some protein, they are the him A and him A3 along with that copper A and copper B. Remember, in case of the cytochrome oxidase, there is no ion sulfur complex. In Cytochrome oxidase, there is copper A and copper B along with him A and him A3 and the base. They are the ultimately carrier of the electron in cytochrome oxidase. They accept the electron from cytochrome C and finally release the electron to the oxygen and oxygen that accept the electron from complex 4 along with the hydrogen and reduce to the water. Whatever energy it is released when electron are the passes through cytochrome oxidase, it is transferred the two proton from matrix part to the intermembrane space. So electron from reduced part of the cytochrome C to the cytochrome oxidase and finally to the oxygen to reduce to H2. And there is a component part of the cytochrome oxidase, cytochrome A, cytochrome A3, and copper A and copper B. Two proton it is a release into the intermembrane space. So remember, when electron it is a passes to the complex one, it transfer the four proton. When it is passes through the complex 3, it transfers the again more 4 proton. And it is passes through the complex 4, it releases the 2 proton. But when electron is passes through the complex 2, it does not release or does not transfer the any proton. So when electron are entered through the NADH pathway means via complex 1 to complex 3 and complex 4 it transferred the total 10 proton 4 from complex 1 4 from complex 3 and 2 from complex 4 so total 4 10 proton are the transfer from matrix to the intermembrane space when electron are the enter into the electron transport chain by FADH2 or complex 2 pathway in which only 6 
proton are the transfer from matrix to the intermembrane space. 0 from the complex 2, 4 from the complex 3 and 2 from the complex 4. So in compared to the NADH, FADH2 are the transfer the less proton from matrix to the intermembrane space. That suggests the less amount of the energy are the produced from FADH2 compared to the NADH. Next part, it is a source of the electron for the electron transport chain. Overall, two reducing equivalent that are the main source of the electron NADH and FADH. It may generate in the mitochondria, it may generate in the cytosome. The two reducing equivalent NADH and FADH are the producing various metabolic pathway of oxidation of the major food stuff of lipid, protein and carbohydrate. Some pathway are the occur in the mitochondria, some pathway are the occur in the cytosome, like glycolysis occur in the cytosome. Mitochondrial pathway are the mainly fatty acid oxidation and TCA cycle, Krebs cycle. NADH are the produced in the mitochondrial pathway by various enzymes like pyruvate dehydrogenase, alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase, isocytate dehydrogenase, malate dehydrogenase, and hydroxyacyl coenzyme A dehydrogenase. And FADH2 are the produced by succinate dehydrogenase, glycerol 3 phosphate dehydrogenase, fatty acyl coenzyme dehydrogenase. All enzymes are the produced NADH and FADH2 in mitochondrial matrix itself. Some pathway also produce the NADH in cytosol, like glycolysis. So, in that case, cell requires the specific transport mechanism for transfer of the NADH from cytoplasm to the mitochondria. Because our inner mitochondrial membrane, it is a impermeable to the NADH itself. So, body required means cell required the subtle mechanism or some type of the transport mechanism for transfer of that NADH to the matrix. Mainly two type of the subtle or transport mechanism are the available, malate aspartate and second one is the glycerol phosphate subtle. Remember, in the malate aspartate subtle pathway, one NADH, one NADH in the cytoplasm are produced the one NADH molecule in the mitochondria. Means compared to the one NADH in the cytoplasm, it releases the one NADH molecule in the mitochondria by malate aspartate subtle pathway. In case of the glycerol phosphate subtle pathway, what happened? One NADH in the cytoplasm I produce the one FADH2 molecule in the mitochondria. Remember. In case of the metal, malate aspartate subtle pathway, one NADH produces the one NADH in the mitochondria. But in case of the glycerol phosphate subtle pathway, what happens? One NADH in the cytoplasm, it is produced the one FADH2 molecule in the mitochondria. So when body or cell utilize the glycerol phosphate subtle pathway, it produces or the less amount of the ATP. Because we have already discussed that NADH are produce the 10 proton, release the 10 proton from matrix to the intermembrane space. FADH only 6 proton are there. So proton gradient whatever generated by NADH have a more compared to the FADH2. So if body use the malate subtle pathway, it is produce the more energy compared to the glycerol subtle pathway. So that is the overview of the electron transport chain. Whatever energy it is released by oxidation of the post of either in the cytoplasm or in mitochondria, it is captured by either NAD or FAD in the form of NADH or FADH2. That reducing equivalent are the oxidized in the mitochondria in electron transport chain that release that electron 
to the complex of the electron transport chain. That electron are the passes from component of the electron transport chain and release the sum of the energy when it is a transfer. That energy are the utilized to transfer the proton from matrix part of mitochondria to the intermembrane space. Means it generates the sum of the proton gradient. So more amount of the proton are the now available in intermembrane space compared to the matrix. So here some of the proton gradient are the generated across the inner mitochondrial membrane where electron it is a passes through the electron transport chain. And the proton gradient whatever generated when electron are the passes through the electron mite transport chain it is utilized by the another complex that is known as a ATP synthase complex to synthesize the high energy compound ATP that is known as a oxidative phosphorylase. So remember here what happened whatever energy are the present in the reducing equivalent it is transferred to the electron transport chain in the form of electron that is known as the electron motive force when electron it is a transfer to the electron transport chain it releases the energy that energy it is a used to transfer the proton from matrix to the intermembrane space means that electron motive force it is converted into the proton motive force and finally that proton motive force are the utilized by the complex 5 or ATP synthase to synthesize the high energy compound ATP. It is known as a phosphoryl transfer potential. Means electron motive force, it is a converted into the proton motive force and the proton motive force, it is finally converted into the phosphoryl transfer potential. Means for the oxidative phosphorylase. That is known as a proton motive force or chemiosmotic theory. It is known as a oxidative phosphorylase. Means when electron it is a transfer through the electron transport chain it generates the proton gradient the proton gradient are the utilized by the another complex to synthesize the high energy compound in the mitochondrial matrix it is known as a oxidative phosphorylase means two reaction electron transport chain and oxidative phosphorylase both are the occur simultaneously and they are the tightly coupled reaction. Now, what is the oxidative phosphorylase and component of the oxidative phosphorylase? We have already discussed that the complex 5 or ATP synthase, it is a part of the oxidative phosphorylase. That is the main component of the oxidative phosphorylase. ATP synthase have mainly two complex. One complex it is a F0 complex and second complex it is a F1 complex. F0 complex it is a embedded in the inner mitochondrial membrane and F1 complex it is a projected inside the matrix part of mitochondria. F0 or ideally it is known as a FO complex. O it is stand for the oligomycin complex specifically inhibited by the oligomycin drug that's why it is known as a o, F O complex it is a hydrophobic sorry mistake it is a hydrophobic in the nature it spans the inner mitochondrial membrane and it is ultimately channel for the proton whatever the proton are the present in the intermembrane space by proton gradient it is a transfer back to the matrix through this channel formed by the FO complex that is a proton channel it is a hydrophobic in nature second one it is a F1 complex 
matrix that is projected inside the matrix part of the mitochondria. It is a hydrophilic in nature. It's a wrong hydrophilic in the nature. Projected in the matrix. It is mainly made up of the nine subunit, three alpha and three beta, along with that one gamma, one epsilon and one delta subunit. So total nine subunit are the present in the F1. F1 complex it is attached to the F O complex to the gamma subunit. Remember. Along with that, that second beta subunit. Mainly it is attached by the gamma subunit. Remember that is a known as a molecular motor of body. ATP synthase also known as a rotor stator motor or molecular motor of the cell in which mainly two type of the subunit one it is a rotating and second it is a fixed or stationary sub. Rotating subunit are the FO complex and gamma subunit of F1 complex. Stationary subunit are the F1 complex other than gamma sub. Means that part of the FO and gamma are the rotational part of the molecular motor and that is the remaining part of the F1 including 3 alpha, 3 beta, 1 delta and 1 epsilon are fixed component of the molecular motor. Means when proton are the passes through that channel it leads to the rotation of that rotatory complex of molecular motor that leads to the rotation of the gamma subunit but does not rotation of the alpha and beta subunit remain. So when gamma subunit are the rotated it leads to the sum of the conformational change in that protein part of alpha and beta and that is ultimately help in synthesis of ATP by joining the ADP and phosphate. That catalytic activity of synthesis of the ATP from ADP and phosphate are mainly present in the beta subunit. Only beta subunit have a catalytic activity. Alpha subunit it is a structural role in the molecular model that stabilizes the shape of the beta subunit. So when proton at the passes through the FO segment, it rotate the FO segment along with the gamma subunit of the F1 subunit or F1 complex that leads to the conformational change in the alpha as well as beta subunit and that is help in a synthesis of the high energy compound. So whatever proton gradient are generated here with the help of the electron transport chain, it is here utilize for the synthesis of the high energy compound AT. The actual mechanism of the ATP synthesis by beta subunit are known as a binding chain mechanism theory. Molecular motor have a three subunit, three beta subunit at the present. All three have a catalytic activity. But remember, all three are does not synthesize the ATP at a time. Only one ATP molecule are the synthesized at a time. Another two subunit are the present in the different form. So overall, the three beta subunit are the present in the three different form at a time. One are present in the loose form, one are present in the tight form, and Third one, it is present in the open form. After some time, when gamma subunit is further rotated, that one subunit it is converted into the tight form, second subunit converted into the open form, and third subunit it is converted into the loose form. What is the role of different form? That loose form. When beta subunit are the present in the loose form, in that form, 
ADP and phosphate that present in the matrix part of the mitochondria are attached to the beta sublinear. Remember here it is only attached, not the synthesized to the ADP. Here in the loose form only ADP and phosphate are the attached to the beta sublinear. When it is loose form converted into the tight form, it actually catalyzes the ATP synthesis. And when tight form it is converted into the open form, that whatever ATP it is synthesized in the tight form, it is released during the open form. So in the loose form, only ADP and phosphate are the attached. In the second form, tight form, actual catalysis occur and in the open form, release of the ATP at the upper. That is the actual schematic representation of the ATP synthesis by different beta subunit. At a one time, okay, one subunit in the open form, one subunit in the tight form, and one subunit in the loose form. In the loose form, ADP and phosphate are the bind. In the tight form, actual catalysis are the occur, and in the open form, ATP it is a release. And that is a gamma subunit of F1. When proton at the passes through the F O complex, it is rotated along with the gamma subunit and the gamma subunit that leads to the conformational change in a beta catalytic subunit of the F1 complex and lead to the actual ATP synthesis. That is known as a oxidative phosphorylation or chemiosmotic. PO ratio, we have already discussed that PO ratio means the number of the ATP are the produced in the term of reducing equivalent are oxidase. We have already discussed that NADH when release the electron through complex 1, 3 and 4, it transfers the total 10 proton from inter matrix to the intermembrane space compared to the FADH2. It is only 6 proton at the transfer from matrix to the intermembrane space. Every four proton are the equivalent to one ATP synthesis. So 2.5 ATP are the synthesized in case of the NADH and only 1.5 ATP are the synthesized by FADH. Inhibitor of the electron transport chain. Various compounds that inhibit the complex of electron transport chain and ultimately stop or block the electron transport chain. The compound are act on either complex 1, 2, 3 or 4. Example of the compound that inhibit the complex 1 or block the complex 1 include mainly amobarbitol that is a barbituric acid rotinol and pyrcidin a compound that block the complex 2 are mainly malonate it is an inhibitor of the succinate dehydrogenase carboxin and ttl <laughs> complex 3 inhibitor include antimycin a and british antilevisine Complex 4 include inhibitor are hydrogen sulfide, carbon monoxide, cyanide and sodium azide. They are the more poisonous compound that block the complex for cytochrome oxidase and that leads to the death of the cell because respiration are the stop, cellular respiration are the blocking. So you have to remember that all the example of the inhibitor of electron transport chain. Complex 1 include barbiturate, rotinol and PRCD. Complex 2 include malonate and carboxin. Complex 3 include antimycin A and British antilevisite. Complex 4 include cyanide, carbon monoxide, hydrogen sulfide and azide, sodium azide. They are the known as the inhibitor of electron transport. Now second, it is an inhibitor of oxidative phosphorylation or complex 5 in which oligomycin O, it stands for FO, means that drug are mainly block the FO complex of complex 5 ATP synthase. 
second compounded block the oxidative phosphorylation are attract tillocyte that actually block the ATP ADP translocase in the mitochondrial membrane. The translocase are the present in the inner mitochondrial membrane for transfer of whatever ATP it is synthesized in the matrix to the outside the cell, outside the mitochondria. It is an attractive cell. Third compound, it is known as an uncompound. Remember, it is not an actually inhibitor of the electron transport chain and oxidative phosphorylation. Uncoupler are the compound. They are not as a, they actually uncouple the electron transport chain from oxidative phosphorylation by disrupting the proton gradient. In the normal case, what happen, whatever electron are transferred to the electron transport chain then generate the proton gradient the proton gradient are the utilized by complex 5 to synthesize the high energy compound but when uncoupler are the present in the mitochondrial membrane in high amount that disturb their proton gradient and now the proton gradient and does not utilize by complex 5 for the ATP synthesis. They include the various chemical compounds as well as physiological compounds. Physiological compounds in the uncoupler are thermogenic, that is a protein present in the brown adipose tissue, thyroxine, it is a T4 hormone, unconjugated bilirubin, and long chain fatty acid. They are the normally physiological compounds present in this cell and body. Act as a the high. Some chemical compound that is act as an uncoupler are two for dinitrophenol, dinitrophenol and high dose of the aspirin. The compound actually disrupting the proton gradient. Remember. Some drug like valinomycin and gamacidine are also act as an uncoupler by incorporating into the inner mitochondrial membrane and produce the proton channel. So, the channel ultimately disturbs the proton gradient. So, proton gradient does not utilize by the complex 5 for the synthesis of the ATP. So, at the end, that is a summary of the all electron transport chain complex 1, 2, 3, 4 with 2 mobile carrier coins and cube cytochrome C proton. Gradient are the generated when electron are the passes from complex of electron transport chain. The proton gradient are the utilized by the complex 5 does not so on here for the synthesis of the AT. So it is all about the electron transport chain and oxidative phosphorylation. If any query then tell me on comment box. Thank you very much. Stay home, stay safe.